Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is JT from Above and Below the Belt. I want to talk about the Earl Smith versus Michael Garcia fight. I know I'm kind of late on this, really late, but uh, I'm still in the Philippines right now with my friend, and uh, she's showing me around, and I'm having a good time, too, at the same time, but it's never too late. But uh, let's get into this fight, what happened in the fight. Well, you know, one thing is, uh, you know, Earl, Earl Smith uh, kind of like, he kind of tricked us a little bit, psyched us out. I thought he was going to go in there with the uh, pressure uh, fighting that he does and uh, to get his uh, opponents out and uh, he did the total opposite and he showed it he showed us that he had uh, uh, another tool or plenty I think he got more plenty of tools in his belt whatever and um, and that's basically what he showed us at the same time pool dominance um, Mike Garcia didn't have a chance and he didn't sh and, and then I mean not saying that Earl Spence was uh, of course he was the bigger and, and uh, stronger and he had the uh, the the arm reach to uh, to uh, to uh, you know say to distract M uh, Mikey Garcia and uh, uh, frustrate him too at the same time with his uh, arm length reach whatever and uh, that's what he did and uh, and Derek James uh, his trainer had a good game plan because he says uh, Mikey Garcia only fights in he only fights in a certain like uh, uh, Minute in the fight, you know, so he don't fight, he don't do, he don't fight all two minutes of the fight. You see what I'm saying? Or well, three minutes of the fight, whatever. But he's, he fights here and there in, 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 in spots. And, um, and, um, it showed us that Errol Spence is, um, is, uh, I would say a elite fighter right now. And, uh, now he, now they, now I've seen on a certain, uh, a certain website, they got him top pound for pound number five. And, uh, um, that's up for debate. Uh, I wouldn't argue with them. Or I wouldn't even uh, disagree with them, or I won't say they're right. But I, I think right now he needed. Well, he he want to finish out the uh, Walter Weight and be uh, the undisputed uh, Walter Weight in the division, which I think he's going to accomplish. Uh, I mean, complete uh, hopefully. But now to go up on weight, now uh, and he got to he got to fight those some of them elite fighters and beat them to be. Um, Pound for pound number one, but if he beat Terrence Crawford, he'd be pound for pound number one. You see what I'm saying? So he got two different ways to be pound for pound number one. You, you see what I'm saying? Be the lead fighter in the in the middleweight division, or be the top pound for pound in the welterweight division um, to be number one. But right now he's not number one. I mean, he said he was number one, but we, this is not the topic to talk about this. But you know, one thing is, uh, Mikey Garcia. I see some certain channels talking about uh, get rid of his. Um, uh, one channel I'm talking about, to my, he's talking about get rid of his uh, corner, and uh, I wouldn't say get rid of his corner. That's not his corner fault. It was Mike Gar Mike Garcia fault. He 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 was reaching too high, and um, and you know one thing is, let me tell you something. I think Mike Garcia can uh, fight in the welterweight division. He did, he was just fighting a, a better guy, and uh, and he took three months to prepare for Errol Spence, and uh, I, I I I just feel like it was enough time to prepare him for. Uh, Earl Spence Jr. and then on top of that, Earl Spence Jr. got well, he got he got an internet in his house. He looking at YouTube like he said he'd been doing, and I think that was one of the reasons why uh, Earl Spence uh, dominated uh, Mike Garcia to looking at what uh, Mike Garcia and uh, and Robert Garcia was talking about. They was talking too much, and I know that was one of the reasons what it was one of the reasons to sell the fight. But he was someone he sees something so. You say you see something. You shouldn't. I think he should never say it that because I think that was the the point of no return. I think for Errol Spence Jr. to figure out what he sees at the same time, and uh, even though he might have seen something, but I think if Errol Spence would have came in with that approach, that pressure, pro, uh, that impression, that pressure fighting that he does, the aggressive fighting that he does, whatever. Um, I just think that uh, Mike Garcia would have been prepared for that style, but he was not prepared for the the. the the uh, the style that he came in with, uh, somewhat of a Floyd Mayweather style, I would say, a Sugar Ray Leonard style, I would say, but he he, he didn't come in with that style. So, um, pro dominance, uh, they say they say Mike Garcia won the second round and maybe the seventh round. I don't remember the the seventh round. It was all Earl Spence. The second round was his debate, but even that round was tough. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you, if you say it's Mike Garcia, okay, give it to Mike Garcia. If it wasn't, you can give it to Earl Spence. It was a tight, you know, it was a, a 
tough round to judge. But all of the other rounds was Errol Spence Jr. But when I seen two at the same time in the fight, Errol Spence kind of tired out in the ninth round. He was throing a lot of punches, you know what I'm saying, and um, like he never did before. And, um, you know, and Mike Garcia, to me, he can probably fight at 147 division. I don't think he should go down to 135. And that means that he won't fight Lomachenko, you know, and that's kind of messed up in a sense. But um, he could have, he could have, he could have, you know, if he fought, if he would have fought Keith Thurman or he would fought Danny Garcia or Sean Porter, that now you know what's kind of funny. For some reason, even though Earl Spence Jr. dominated him and uh, uh, made him look like an amateur instead of an elite fighter, where people say he say he is a uh, or a great fighter, uh, you know, what people say Mike Garcia he is, and uh, that's up for debate too at the same time, because Robert Robert Easter, Adrian Broner. And Sergey Lipnis is not a league fighter that he beat. They were good fighters, I would say. Uh, you know, Robert Garcia, they say Futona beat him and Carmi, or Carmi, Richard Carmi beat him. And Adrian Broner, he don't throw his hands, so they not a league fighters. Sir, Sergey Lipnis got a, a bacon belt. I knew he had to beat the person for it, but at the same time, um, he was he ain't a league fighter. So does that make Mike Garcia a league fighter, you know what I'm saying, because he beat those three? I think it was the overall record. He got 39 wins and 30 knockouts. You know what I'm saying? So, but who on his resume is an elite fighter? You know what I'm saying? Orlando Salido is not an elite fighter. He beat Lomachenko, but but he beat him. But he's a pressure fighter. But at the same time, just like uh, um, Errol Spence Jr. Uh, made uh, uh, a, a good fighter or elite fighter, whatever you want to call Mike Garcia is, he is a good fighter. Is, is he a great fighter? That's up for debate. Elite fighter? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know I, I know I call Earl Spence a elite fighter, but because he's beaten, he's beat, he beat another good fighter, which is another, I mean, another fighter which had uh, zero losses, and he put a, a, a loss to his uh, resume, uh, on his resume. Another thing, too, at the same time, um, you know, Trying to, you know, when I seen on certain certain people channels, they was talking about getting rid of uh, Mike Garcia Conan because he lost against Errol Smith Jr. That was Mike Garcia's fault. He was reaching too high, and uh, he was talking too much, and uh, and I think he left himself open too much of uh, too much information. You know what I'm saying about? He didn't say exactly what he gonna do, but he said somewhat of what he's gonna do to. Um, uh, Errol, Errol Spence, he said he was something like him, and Errol Spence said, well, you know what, if I'm like you, then I'm going to change it up then. You know what I'm saying? To beat him. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, it's not Robert Garcia's fault. It's not his, uh, It's not uh, Michael Garcia's dead fault. It's Mike Garcia's fault. He was reaching too high. And if he would have fought um, uh, Keith Thurman or Danny Garcia or Sean Porter and make his way up to Errol, Errol Spence Jr., that would have been, been better. Prepare yourself. Don't jump too high. And three months to prepare for the one of the best in the welterweight division. Um, I don't think it's enough time. You see, what I'm saying so, but that's what happened. And I know I know Errol Spence is going to dominate him like this. I I thought that these Mike Garcia probably won two or three rounds at the most, but he didn't win no rounds. With some people, most people were saying, you know, what I'm saying so. Uh, I know some people was probably pissed because they paid seventy five dollars for a fight that wasn't even a contest. And it was a one sided fight, and um. But if I talk about this, but I'm gonna get back to the more victory. That's a, that's gonna be another victory uh, video. But right now, man, um, I think he needs to stay to 100. I think he needs to stay to 147, or he can go down to 140. But 135 to 100, 130. Uh, I mean, Robert. You should. I mean, Robert Garcia said uh, that he's not gonna do that. He's not gonna go make a weight. He's not gonna make a weight drain down to that 135 to 130 because it's. He can't. He probably can't maintain that weight, and uh, he might not look the same no more. And then on top of that, it's not so much of what he took in the ring, like the abuse, but it's the psychological thing to me. How he's going to be for the next fight? You know what I'm saying? It's a psychological thing now, because he he say he's a elite fighter. Everybody talking about he's a elite fighter. He's a good. He's a great fighter, and um, and he was beat and dominated. I mean, if he would have got knocked out by Errol Spence Jr., that would have been different. You know what I'm saying? Because Everybody would say a bigger fighter be uh, uh, knocked out a, a little guy, but not outbox a little guy. Cause I think he would have had a chance of if, if Errol Smith would outbox them. You know what I'm saying? But if he would have came in with that, but even if he would came in, if, even if Errol Smith would came in with the the aggressive fighting that he does, I think 
Mike Garcia would, would have been more prepared for that for that style. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he still probably would have lost, but I don't. You know, I don't know. Uh, we'll never know. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's, a, it's up for the. It's up for grass or debate to talk about that. But right now, uh, what do y'all think Mike Garcia should do? Or do you think he should stay to 100? Do you should. Do you think he should stay to 147? Or go down to 140? Uh, do you think uh, he should fight like Sean Porter, Keith Thurman, or Danny Garcia? Because I know I know all three of them would take that fight with Mike Garcia. You know what I'm saying? But what do you got? What do y'all guys think about this? Uh, leave a comment at the bottom of my page. Subscribe to my page. Like my page. Hit the notification bell for new videos from me. This is JT from Above and Below the Belt. Bye bye.